as we continue our study on circles, we're going to move on to how arcs and chords interact with each other. We've learned what an arc is, we've learned what a, cork a chord is, now we're going to learn about how they affect each other. The first property we have is, in a circle, if a diameter or a radius is perpendicular to the chord, then it bisects the chord and also the arc. What that means is, if you look at the picture here, we have the diameter right there. If the diameter is perpendicular to the chord, which is demonstrated by the right angle, then it bisects it. So whenever the radius or the diameter is a right angle to the chord, it means it cuts it into two equal pieces and it also cuts it into two congruent arcs. So the arc AF and the arc BF would be congruent just like the segment from A to the intersection point is congruent to the segment B to the intersection point. Next, in a circle two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. What that means is if the distance from the center of the circle to the chord is equal to the distance from the center to the chord of the other chord, then it means that the chords themselves are congruent to each other. In our picture here, we have a chord FC, which is 11, chord CG, which is also 11. Since both of those chords have a measurement of 11, it means that ED is congruent to AB. Next, in a circle, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if the corresponding chords are congruent. What this means is chord ED is congruent to chord AB, therefore arc AB is congruent to arc ED. Since the chords are congruent, their arcs are also congruent. If we go back to that measurement of 11, that measurement of 11 gives us a lot of information. Since the distance from the center to the chord is 11 for both of our segments, that means the chords are congruent and their corresponding arcs are congruent, all because of the measurement from the center to the chord being 11. Lastly is just two words that you may have not heard before. The first is inscribed. You'll notice it right here inside of this quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is inscribed in the circle, meaning the quadrilateral is completely inside the circle. However, to be inscribed, the vertices of the quadrilateral all have to touch the circle. If one vertex of that quadrilateral was not actually on the circle, then it would no longer be inscribed. So inscribed means the shape is inside and it, is also have, it also has its vertices on the circle. The circle then would be called circumscribed because the circle is completely around the quadrilateral However, it does touch it at all four vertices. So circumscribed means it's around it, but touching all the vertices. Inscribed means it's completely inside, but also touching at all vertices. Here's a question based on what we've been learning. Segment EF and GH are equidistant from the center, where PQ and PR The radius of the circle P is 15 centimeters and EF is 24 centimeters. Find PR. 
The first part here, it says EF and GH are equidistant to the center, and PQ and PR represent the distance from the center. We should put that information on here. First off, EF is 24, but that means we can divide this into a 12 and 12. But now this piece that it says that EF and EG are equidistant from the center means that PQ and PR are congruent. Lastly, it tells us that the radius is 15, which means I can draw a segment from the center of the circle to point F, and that's 15. So if you notice, this green shaded triangle is actually a right triangle. So we can do 12 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared. The x squared part is going to be the distance from P to Q, which will be the same as the distance from P to R. So we have 144 plus x squared equals 225. Subtracting the 144 to the other side will give us 81, which means x squared is 81. We learned from algebra that when we undo squaring, in this case, we would get x equals positive and negative 9. However, since we're talking about the distance of an object, we can't use a negative measurement because we can't have a negative distance, which means our answer is 9. So the distance from P to Q and the distance from P to R is 9. That's the end of the lesson on arcs and chords. If you have any questions about how they interact or how any of these things work together, please stop in and talk to me and I'll help you out.